Oh, apparently this is news now. DreamWorks is certainly a thing. So despite their best efforts with Mega Mind 2, DreamWorks has generally been putting out some interesting and diverse projects across the past couple of years, varying in all states of quality and success. And now Bad Guys, a movie that's very much part of this shift, has had its release date confirmed for 2025. Recently, with Bad Guys and Puss in Boots The Last Wish, as well as, I guess, the Wild Robots seeming to continue this trend, DreamWorks have been teasing much bolder project directions. This is DreamWorks at some of their best, and The Bad Guys was one of their greatest movies of recent times. And even when it didn't quite work with Ruby Gilman, they still clearly took risks with the movie's animation. That would be more of an example of somewhere along the mid category of DreamWorks recent movies. And now they're returning to one of those projects with Bad Guys 2, which despite my reservations about any good movie you make being immediately obligated to a sequel, I can't help but be at least a little bit excited. The Bad Guys is emblematic of some of DreamWorks' best in recent times, kick-starting the whole stylistic change that is emblematic of the modern DreamWorks aesthetic. That said, with both Kung Fu Panda being received as also kinda mid, and then there was the whole disaster hole Mega Mind 2 being something I very much made my thoughts known on, DreamWorks hasn't exactly smashed their sequels recently. The one exception seems to be Puss in Boots 2, who had a mid original movie, so reason suggests that we have it one way or the other. But then there's all sorts of other nuances into the mix. If you saw my recent video about a new DreamWorks report, there was implications of a complete gutting of the studio's animation department and outsourcing future projects elsewhere. Even with one insider going on to say that the Wild Robot is DreamWorks' last in-house mainline studio's animation. Which then begs the question, what's going on with this next project then? You know, like, I'm just a bit apprehensive about the company's future right now. Since this could very easily be the bad guys done by somebody else, seemingly. Ever since Illumination's parent company, Universal, bought DreamWorks in 2016, there was always a fear that they would just copy and paste their Illumination business model of making the movies abroad on the cheap, and so far, we're steadily steering towards that model. However, not all hopes lost. As I mentioned in that video, they'll be using the same Canadian subdivision of Sony as Sony Animation. And whilst it just feels like they're going for a money loophole, I can't deny that this hadn't stopped Sony Animation becoming a much more interesting studio in recent years. After all, if all of their movies have been outsourced to Canada, then that includes the Spider-Verse movies as well. So it's not necessarily that outsourcing a movie is going to guarantee you into poor quality outcomes. In other words, whilst I still think it's a massive L that we are losing the internal DreamWorks studio seemingly, that have given us so many memories and amazing films, Sony Imageworks producing the animation isn't necessarily going to spell the end of their quality. I mean, let's be honest, DreamWorks has managed to produce a wildly mixed resume completely on their own. As far as I understand it, the story and creative team will still be in-house and collaborating with this outside production house. And presumably, one of the first projects of this new era of DreamWorks will potentially be Bad Guys 2. Released in 2022, Bad Guys 1 somewhat quietly became a surprise hit for the studio. Before we get into the numbers, it's important to note that this movie came out during the COVID-19 recovery period for theatres. We were still at Top Gun Maverick down at this point, and besides a massive Spider-Man team-up movie, not many movies were really bringing in the box office. Doom Part 1, whose sequel's now destroying the box office right now, was made with the expectation to at least get near to a billion dollars, and it didn't even reach half. And at this troubled time, that was still considered successful. With this in mind, you can appreciate why, despite only reaching $250 million, Bad Guys 1 was considered to be a W for DreamWorks. Just before this, Encanto, a movie that in the public eye is already an immediate modern Disney classic, made similar. In normal circumstances, these would both be considered massive disappointments. However, not only were times different, but clearly both of these movies found bigger audiences on streaming. Much of Encanto's success is credited to its subsequent performance on Disney+. The last demographic to really return to the cinemas were families when it came to navigating a public health crisis. Later in 2022, those damn minions would further the fight to get them back in the cinema, accompanied by some trending teenagers in suits, but at this point, streaming was the way to get to that four-quadrant audience. 
clearly, in this regard, Universal was happy with the bad guys as a sequel had indeed been greenlit, with a set release date now for next year. That's 2025 for any historians watching this video back after reading their new book, DreamWorks Just What The Hell Went Wrong. Anyway, the important thing is that the movie was very well received, or to remove the industry jargon that I've become depressingly used to, everyone thought it was great. I really liked this movie. The characters, the premise, the animation, mwah, chef's kiss. And the fact that it went out of its way to boldly introduce a whole new animation aesthetic, kind of akin to Mitchells vs. Machines, but still following through in that trend, has made a mark on the animation industry going forwards. We see emblems of following through with this, whether it is with themselves, with Puss in Boots, or the likes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that. I even went out of my way to make a scene that changed video about it which I still think is pretty decent. Even had an animator make some comments after the fact. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. As per usual, do check below to see if you are subscribed. And if not, come join along as we cover every animated movie news of the year. I'm surprised I get to talk about DreamWorks so very much. They have like five different projects going on at different times, and each one is wildly different in quality. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on your expectations for a bad guy sequel. Is it the best they can do, or do you think it's ready to be doomed? Anyway, let me know in the comments down below, or on our Discord server, also linked in the description, and I'll let you get back to the rest of this video. And clearly, when it comes to reception, everybody else was also adoring this movie. This movie holds an 88% critical rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 93% audience rating. People love this movie, and the extra audience it likely gained on streaming and home media would suggest that a sequel would do a lot better than the pandemic laid an original. To be fair, even if it had completely fallen on its face, they'd kind of tied themselves to a sequel as they literally announced it a month before the original's release, likely to boost hype for the movie. Though I think they would have cancelled those plans if it had been a failure. I thought we'd nonetheless acknowledge that that's a thing that they did do. But beyond corporate discourse to promote a movie, I think there's genuinely a lot of love for this project creatively. Boss Baby was financially successful enough for its sequel, but I can't imagine the creative team over there jumping at the walls so that they had to do a follow-up to that one. But with this, I know I'd be glad to be returning to these characters. Hell, cut to Puss in Boots 2 and they were already sat in their studio ident. This is also an IP that lends itself to multiple movies because there's multiple books. If you didn't already know, Bad Guys is based on an incredibly successful graphic novel series, written and illustrated by Aaron Blabe. As far as potential sequels go, you have quite a list of titles. We have Bad Guys Mission Unpluckable, Bad Guys The Furball Strikes Back, Bad Guys Attack of the Zittens, Bad Guys Book 5 Intergalactic Gas, and Bad Guys Aliens vs. Bad Guys. P potential for a Monsters vs. Aliens crossover? There's a lot of story to pull from, and I like that the Spider-Verse influence on the animation is to capture that feel of the original graphic novels beyond just a straight copy. Plus, learning that there are multiple, multiple sequel books means I'm actually a lot more faithfully interested in the story as I assumed the first movie was a one and done they stopped being the bad guys. No need for a sequel, but glad to know I'm wrong. While it is an open secret that there was an influence with Spider-Verse, I do think Bad Guys has an animation style that is wildly different to Spider-Verse still. They definitely tried to do something unique with it. Beyond the rich well of source material, the series' concept and characters just lend themselves to multiple adventures. It's a gang of outlaw animals, there's a lot of things you can do with that. I also like that DreamWorks has lent it to their heritage as a truly great studio for adapting contemporary books. Whilst Disney Animation was very much for this adapting classic fairy tales and whatnot, DreamWorks has continued to set itself apart for being this, for going for modern work and storytelling ever since the original Shrek. Since then, we've had the How to Train Your Dragon movies, Captain Underpants, even Peabody and Sherman. Remember that they made that movie? Even those damn Boss Baby movies were loosely based on some successful picture books. That example aside, I'd say DreamWorks have a pretty good track record when it comes to adapting source material like this. That's one reason why people are so excited for The Wild Robot. It at least appears to have gone out of its way to be worthy of the book that it's based on. And Orion in the Dark earlier this year was, you know, pretty decent. However, we shall see if they deliver for this one. Some of the 2024 releases to have actually come out so far have not exactly captured the imagination. I still can't believe that they butchered the Megamind property the way that they have. I get it with Boss Baby, you've already set the expectation low, but to take a well-received property that you haven't touched for years just to do that is so depressing. Truly, this was a TV movie in series and not done by the mainline movie studio. 
but it does show that they aren't afraid to completely make a dog's dinner out of beloved IP on occasion. Plus, they've still got to pay the TV animation crowd, so there'll probably be more TV animation series to come. Nevertheless, outsourcing to Sony Imageworks aside, I'm generally not worried that Bad Guys 2 will be a worthy follow-up to the original movie, with plenty of material to draw from yet. If any DreamWorks project has plenty of potential as a series, it's going to be this one. Against the midst of terrible TV adaptations, a guttering of the innards of DreamWorks, and seemingly little hope for the future, hopefully as the first production in this new dark age era of DreamWorks, maybe it can burst through with a little bit of light. It's certainly got the best chance out of everything else they own. For now though, I'm gonna end it off there. My name's been Daz, thank you for making it to the very end of this video. Do let me know your thoughts on Bad Guys 2, what would you want to see them adapt? Are you familiar with the books or anything like that? Maybe I should get around to reading these movie books in advance. That'd probably be a good source of research. And I will see you in a little bit.